Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ in Freebie Friday. Now before we begin, if you're new to our channel, these videos are all about answering your health related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, something regarding diet, nutrition, herbalism, Chinese medicine, or really anything regarding health and wellness, and you would like our help in answering your questions, all you have to do is leave those questions in the comment section below, and we'll be answering those based on popularity the questions that we feel are most beneficial to the group overall, and of course the questions that we are capable of answering. And something else really great about these videos is that every week from that comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms. So even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're interested in winning some free herbs, all you have to do to be entered to win is simply give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, and then just drop any comment in the comment section below. And with that out of the way, let's get to this week's questions. All right, so taking a look at our first question, this question reads, I've heard that as you age, stomach acidity lessens. What causes this? What lifestyle and dietary factors worsen this? And what is the best way to treat this through diet, lifestyle, and supplements? All right, so to answer your question, you're correct in what you've heard about stomach acidity decreasing with age. And this is simply due to the fact that aging is a stress. And the stress of aging can actually directly impair thyroid function, slowing down the metabolism. And the metabolism doesn't just affect cellular energy production, but the thyroid in particular does directly affect the secretion of hydrochloric acid and digestive function overall. So the basic reason that stomach acid in particular decreases with age is the same reason that digestive function overall decreases with age and why energy levels overall decrease with age is because the stress of aging slowly slows down the metabolism turning down thyroid function, which also turns down the rate of digestion. So this is something I've talked about before, the correlation between hypothyroidism and digestive issues. If you wanna learn more about this in detail, definitely be sure to watch this video here, which dives into the correlation, the research behind hypothyroidism and low stomach acid production, or just low digestive function overall, and get some tips there. Otherwise, the factors that worsen this, dietary and lifestyle, keep in mind that aging is just a stress. So as I talk about in the perfect digestion course, one of the number one causes of low stomach acid is stress. And this is because stress directly turns down the thyroid, activates the adrenal glands, and this shifts the nervous system from this relaxed parasympathetic or rest and digest state to a more active, hyperactive stress state. And this directly shuts off digestive function for the sake of preserving energy and using your energy to basically fight or flight. So the basic reason that aging contributes to this is because aging is a stress, which means that really any chronic stress or intense stress could also decrease the production of hydrochloric acid. So in terms of lifestyle, obviously there's not too much we can do about aging. The body is a biological being, it's meant to age. Obviously, we want to be able to slow it down or keep it as natural of a process as possible, which means that we want to make sure that we're not contributing to the aging process by leading toxic and stressful lifestyles. So obviously, in terms of lifestyle, all the common things that we're always told are unhealthy that we shouldn't be doing, you know, staying up too late, excessively consuming alcohol, the use of recreational drugs, even pharmaceutical drugs, eating a junk food diet that has tons of dietary toxins in it. And in the modern world today, you know, the exposure to EMFs, tons of electromagnetic fields, blue light, and the radiation exposure, the xenoestrogens, all of these things can be stressful to the body and attribute to the chronic stress load that is leading to low thyroid function and low digestive function. So just leading as stress-free of a life as possible is gonna be the most beneficial. And in regards to this, I always quote William Blake, and he says, if it's pleasurable, it's good for you. If it's painful, it's not. So I think in terms of diet, I think this is a helpful insight. Basically, the least stressful things are gonna be the things that are ultimately most pleasurable. So take a look at your life and just make a decision to not do things that cause pain and suffering and make it a priority to lead a life that is more pleasurable and enjoyable. And that should correct a lot of the lifestyle stressors. In terms of diet, as we talk about a lot, the toxic 
inflammatory polyunsaturated fats, difficult to digest grains, beans, legumes, or really any gut irritating food whatsoever. Anything that is estrogenic or going to slow the thyroid function would all contribute to digestive issues and impaired hydrochloric acid secretion. So if you haven't yet already, definitely be sure to check out the Perfect Digestion course. You're not only going to learn a very specific dietary protocol for correcting every sort of digestive issue that you could think of from more severe inflammatory bowel diseases to just constipation. But in addition to the dietary stuff, you're going to learn about the right herbs, the right supplements to take and avoid, and of course, all the lifestyle factors. There's even an in-depth stress assessment, so it helps you target the psychological stress, the mental and emotional stress, which is a major factor for a lot of people with digestive issues and low thyroid. And it walks you through giving you various mental exercises that you can apply to start reducing that major source of stress. Otherwise, to look at some specific dietary factors right now that would be worsening the secretion of hydrochloric acid. One of the major ones that people overlook is the importance of getting enough calories. So a hypocaloric diet is one of the easiest ways to slow down your thyroid and give yourself hypothyroidism. So any dietary protocol or practice that has you chronically restricting your calorie intake where you're expending more energy than you're taking in, creating a deficit that is usually promoted as beneficial for losing weight or for fat burning, you will lose weight, you will burn fat, but these are stressful ways to do it and are ultimately gonna to lead to hypothyroidism. So again, any diet that has you chronically restricting your calories is not gonna be beneficial over the long term for thyroid health or digestive health. So even the diets based around intermittent fasting, from what I've seen in my experience with it and other people, they usually always end up with some degree of hypothyroidism because it's just so hard to get in the adequate amount of calories you need to keep a high rate of metabolism and proper thyroid function when you're only eating for a small window throughout the day. But obviously this is a highly controversial topic. People debate it all day long since like the 1950s, whether a high metabolism or a slow metabolism is better for longevity. So I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but generally speaking, if you look at the very simplified research and facts, hypocaloric diets do contribute to hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism does contribute to decreased digestive function motility in the secretion of digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid. The other thing to understand as I talk about in this video here is the compounds that make up hydrochloric acid or stomach acid. So hydrochloric acid is comprised of hydrogen and chloride, chemically speaking. Hydrogen you're going to find in all of your protein-rich foods. So a protein-deficient diet is often a contributing factor to impaired hydrochloric acid secretion. And then in terms of chloride, we're talking about sodium chloride mostly. So a salt-deficient diet or a low-sodium diet is going to contribute to low stomach acid production. And interestingly enough, as people age, they get hypertension. The doctor doesn't understand the underlying mechanisms of hypertension because of backward science and then they tell their patient to go on a sodium free diet and then their stomach acid secretions drop significantly and now they have digestive issues, bloating, constipation, etc. So I would recommend getting enough salt in addition to getting enough protein for the basic building blocks of hydrochloric acid. So all three of these things, a hypochloric diet, a protein deficiency, and a sodium free or a low sodium diet would all be contributing dietary factors to low hydrochloric acid stomach production. And to no surprise, digestive issues are increasing and so many people are told to go on a low calorie diet to decrease their caloric intake, to decrease their protein intake because it causes cancer and to not consume sodium because it causes you know, a rise in blood pressure and cardiovascular issues or hypertension. But in reality, not consuming these things is usually just contributing to impaired digestive function. So definitely avoid these things, get enough calories, get enough protein, get enough sodium. But my last piece of advice is again, to just check out the Perfect Digestion course. If you have any digestive systems whatsoever, it's gonna cover all of these things I've talked about today and so much more. All right, getting to our next question. This question is pretty straightforward. It reads, can you please explain how to choose what dose and grain of thyroid hormone? So for those of you that do not know, this question's referring to a thyroid medication or a desiccated thyroid supplement, which is basically a freeze-dried or dehydrated, desiccated thyroid gland from a pig or a cow that's turned into a tablet and used to treat hypothyroidism. So in hypothyroidism, there's two major things usually going on that's contributing to it. 
the thyroid is not producing enough of the inactive form, the T4 or thyroxin, or the thyroid is not properly converting it. And taking a desiccated thyroid supplement can help to correct this by providing the adequate amount of T4 and also adding in some T3. So that way, even if your body's not efficiently converting it, your body's getting some of that T3 through the supplement. Now, there are tons of factors that contribute to hypothyroidism in these two primary imbalances. So if you're taking even a desiccated thyroid supplement, but you're not doing the groundwork, if you're not correcting the nutritional imbalances, the protein deficiencies, the low carb diets, the low calorie diets, if you're not getting enough of the trace elements like tyrosine, iodine, and selenium that you need to produce the thyroid hormone, if you have high estrogen, high cortisol, and you're not correcting or remedying any of these things, taking the supplement is ultimately gonna be useless. It's not gonna be beneficial. But if you have done these things first, adding in a thyroid medication can be very beneficial. Now in terms of dose, or the actual grain amount. The grain is really just referring to the dose. That's how they measure the dose when you're taking a thyroid supplement. And the standard amount for treating hypothyroidism from my research is one to two grains. Now, generally speaking, anybody with hypothyroidism is probably gonna find relief in taking one grain every day, pretty much as long as they need to take it to stabilize their metabolic rate but again, only if they're doing these other things. So you probably find that if you're not correcting the other underlying causative factors, that taking one grain might provide some relief in the beginning, and then you'll notice after six months that you need to increase the dose to feel the effects, and then you become sort of dependent on it because you're not treating it as a supplement, you're treating it as a medicine because you're not ultimately looking at the bigger picture. But if you are looking at the bigger picture and correcting the causes and these other factors I touched on, then one grain every day should be suffice for restoring proper thyroid function, increasing the metabolic rate. Now in terms of how long you take it, you could ultimately take it for the rest of your life. If you are taking the natural desiccated form that has the right ratio of T4 to T3, because you could look at it again more like a supplement in the same way that you would eat high quality nutritious foods like liver, like high quality grass fed beef and lamb, like egg yolks, raw dairy, and nutrient dense foods to provide your body with the building blocks to produce energy, you could look at a desiccated thyroid supplement very similarly if again, the rest of your lifestyle is in order. So I think that it's safe to take for the rest of your life as long as you're not taking too high of a dose and you're doing these other things. It's again, very similar to supplementing with some liver on a regular basis to act sort of as a multivitamin. And in fact, the thyroid gland was part of most traditional diets. It still is in other places where you can get it or you know, farmers might be consuming it when they make a whole chicken. You know, This is something like other organs like the heart, kidneys, liver, brain, pancreas was mixed into other food products and to other traditional meals and consumed sort of regularly. So I think since the thyroid gland has been taken out of the traditional diet, there has been a pretty much parallel increase to hypothyroidism. So it might be just one of the contributing factors. So I think looking at from that perspective, you know, I think it's more or less a functional food, but again, you need to get that desiccated form. If you're taking a synthetic form, this is not gonna have the same effect. First of all, a lot of the times people prescribed a thyroid supplement for hypothyroidism are just given the T4, and this can be problematic because if they have liver toxicity or if they have a protein deficient diet or something along those lines, that T4 is not gonna be converted properly. And what can happen instead is it turns into reverse T3, which would actually just oppose a lot of the effects of the thyroid in the body. This is why you see people that take a thyroid medication oftentimes report that they just feel worse. So you need to make sure you're getting that T3. And I would generally recommend getting a natural desiccated one because the synthetic ones might have toxic fillers. And at the very least, they have a lot of the other important constituents that's otherwise naturally occurring in the thyroid removed. So to answer your question again, the dose would probably be around one to two grains. I would start off with a lower dose and then implement all of the other factors I've discussed frequently on this YouTube channel and also in our healthy weight loss course, our Forever Healthy Hair course. Basically, all of our online courses give a thyroid protocol. So if you're applying those things and taking one grain, that should suffice. All right, guys, that does bring this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. Remember, if you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, all you have to do to be entered to win is simply give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, and then just drop your comments and questions in the comment section below. Otherwise, for learning more beyond this YouTube channel, as I mentioned throughout this video, we do have an online wellness academy with a variety of online courses for improving your health. We also have a blog and an online tonic herb shop, 
all which you can find in the description box below.